thanks to Hot Click Marketing for supporting this video. For more information, go to their website. Welcome to The New Norm, uh, a vlog which is recorded in front of a bookcase rather than outside a stadium. Tonight it's City against Burnley, game two of The New Normal behind closed doors. A comfortable victory against Arsenal in the first match. This one against Burnley should, on paper, be a relatively comfortable one. How are people settling in to the new norm of watching games in empty stadiums? And what do they think of tonight's game? Let's find out. You can ask any professional footballer. If you've got fans that are behind you and you're playing at home, it does act as like a 12th man. I don't care what anybody says. Those fans give you that extra impetus, especially your home fans. And... Um, and these games that I've seen so far since we've started playing has just proved the point so much. It, 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 it makes you realise how, how important fans are because the amount of money that's been going into the game at clubs at a different level because of TV, people think that you don't need the fans. This is shouting out to everybody that we need the fans. And the sooner we can get our fans back into the stadium in a safe and a healthy way, the better our game, or the better the game of football will become again. I'm a member of the New York Sky Blues, the official supporters club chapter in New York City. And it's been weird, for sure. It's been very weird, not just ab about watching City or football, but just life in general. Um, today was the start of what, uh, what we're calling um, phase two of reopening. But that still doesn't mean you're uh, you're allowed to enter a pub or a, or a restaurant per se, uh, even even a church or a mosque or synagogue. Uh, they're only allowing 25% capacity in now, so it's not like we're going to be uh, going to uh, to our home pub, which is Amity Hall, anytime soon. So we've been trying to come up with different ways of watching the watching the match alone together. So uh, that could be something like a Zoom watch party. Um, I've seen other supporters club chapters in, in America doing that. Um, uh, off the top of my head, uh, the Twin Citizens in Minneapolis are definitely at the forefront of that. Um, as for tonight, I'm just hoping for another 5-0 uh, thrashing. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I realize for a lot of fans over there, you're missing out on an experience that we are going to be missing out on here soon. Uh, we're already missing it with baseball, and we're going to be missing out with American football, which I, I don't think we are really comprehending as a society yet. I feel really badly affected by it, and, and I'm questioning my commitment, really, for so many years. I know it's not the, the club's fault as such, although I have asked for a press pass and they've said no, but you know, it's not the club's fault that, that, uh, yeah. that this is happening. It is a worldwide thing, and... There isn't necessarily a logic. I just feel really demoralized. I, I think we're going to have the same thing here for American football this fall. Um, we've had people in the same boat. You know, generations have been going to the same home games for years, following their teams. I don't think we're prepared for that. Uh, the emotions you're going through, I think a lot of us here in the United States are going to go through uh, for our sports that we've grown up with, that we've been going to in the town I'm in, college town with a big college football we're going to have the same problem, I think. I think what I, the emotions you're, you've been displaying through social media, I think a lot of us are going to have here. So uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be very interesting. I think if I've got any excitement, it's the fact that I'm going to see our fantastic players again, the likes of Kevin De Bruyne spraying the ball around the pitch, Bernardo running his socks off. Uh, there was one incredible moment, uh, Laporte, an interception from a pass that I thought was going to go through to an Arsenal player the other night, and he stuck out a leg and just brought it under control, and we were away again. Um, yeah, there is, there is the, the thing, COVID, hanging over us, uh, and I don't actually believe in football restarting again. I think, you know, while people are still dying, I think it's, it's wrong. But I can't change that. I can't do anything about it. Uh, and if City are playing, I'm going to be watching it and I'm going to be excited about it. Should be a comfortable home victory against Burnley, shouldn't it? <laughs> How long have you been a City fan, Ian? <laughs> uh, is anything ever predictable like that with City? Uh, you would think so on paper, uh, but football isn't played on paper. Yes, I'm up for tonight. And I think now I've watched a few games this week, not only City, 
um, obviously the Liverpool Everton yesterday and what have you. But um, I think now we know there's not a crowd. We've seen it a couple of times on the television. It's not quite such a shock to the system as, as it was. I still don't think we should be playing behind closed doors. Um, I still don't think it's right. If they want to give Liverpool the league, just give it to them. I just think we're still putting players' lives in danger. What do you think your husband, Bernard Halford, would have thought of this? Because we lost him before all this lockdown and the pandemic happened. And he was involved. He was Mr Manchester City for so many years. What do you think he would have made of it all? Do you know, I, I honestly don't know. Because, as you know, Bernard organised and controlled everything. And this was one thing even he couldn't have organised and controlled. Um, I don't think he'd have dealt with it very well. Um, being Well, he'd have been definitely on lockdown, wouldn't he? I don't think he'd have dealt with that. Um, he certainly, I don't think he would have wanted the players to put their lives and their families at risk by playing now. Um, I, I just tried to think, and in a way, and, and you know, if I could have him sat here now, he's the first person I'd want sat next to me. Um, I, I feel as though I'm glad he's not here to go through all this because, well, he'd have been, he'd have been um, 79 now. And you just think, well, he really wouldn't have coped with this. I, I just, I'm glad he's not here. I'm glad he hasn't seen this. I'm actually in uh, Varanasi. It's a city in Uttar Pradesh. I'm at home right now because of the, you know, COVID-19 situation. And I'll be watching the team and uh, on my television. At the same time, my whole people, you know, from my uh, supporters club will be watching them. We'll be talking about them throughout the game. And of course, the half-time uh, half talks will go on as well. What are you expecting from tonight's game then? Are you expecting a comfortable victory? Um, not really. You know Burnley. You know them well. Uh, you know how tight they are with their defence. So, <clears throat> that's always going to be a problem. But, uh, you know, talking about the past game from Arsenal, the team was functioning really well from the midfield. So, I think, uh, see, always City are always going to create chances. It's about who, who's going to take it. I don't know if, you know, if it's going to be Jesus or if it's going to be Aguero on the top. But I'm sure that, you know, the chances will be made for them. Are you expecting uh, a lot of changes? Pep has suggested that he has to keep rotating and clearly there are five substitutes available. He also said he would use five in every game. So we're going to see a lot of players. Are you expecting the 11 to be very different tonight then? Um, see, personally, you know, you can never predict the 11 with Pep. But at the end of the day, uh, I think that, you know, um, the Premier League is too far to catch now. So, I'm sure that Pep would be looking to, you know, um, try to make new players work. And obviously, I think that's why, I think Foden might be, might be starting uh, this game. Are you missing match day from that perspective and actually just not being at the game anymore? I, I am and I'm not in. I get more time with my kids, you know. I miss it for them, really, because they loved going up to City. They, they loved watching the game. They loved City Square and they... they you know, for the, the fact that their dad worked at City and he got into the games, they loved it. And I love that. Do I miss the club? No. Do I miss watching the team? Yes. And I think that's all I'm going to say on that. And, and, and people can read into what they want on that. The club, not at all. Don't miss it one bit. Miss the football, miss going there, missing the match day experience. I've been to one game since um, the unfortunate incident and it was City versus West Ham. And the amount of fans that came up were brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So thank you very much indeed. But I'm glad football's back on telly. Um, I was climbing the walls. It's got real bad in here, Ian, because I don't know if you can see that, but there's some painting behind. I'm, I'm still deciding which colour to paint my office. That's how bad things are. I've gone, I don't know whether to go for that. That This three there, my other half has made me paint three. So if anybody's watching this, let me know. In fact, I'll give you a proper look. Look, there you go. Is it this one? Is it that one? Is it that one? That's what my life's becoming, Ian. <laughs> So is he going to win tonight? Because yeah, Burnley's a winnable one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. And, you know, we, we look shot. The passing, the f passing and, and the other night was fantastic. I'd like to see Lero sign and make their appearance before he departs. I'd love to see Phil Folding get back on. And what a difference it makes uh, with Emmerich Laporte. Massive, massive difference. He, he just, 
commands that back four, which is brilliant. And I thought Garcia was uh, a bit ropey for the first five or ten minutes, but brilliant after that. And, hey, between me and you, if a ball's coming and Edison is on his way, just duck. That's my advice to any player that, that's going and maybe watching this. If that ball's coming, Edison's out, just have a look, look, just get down because he takes no prisoners. And by the way, how good is his passing? Unbelievable. Well, Burnley at home. Again, another game we should be at that unfortunately we're not at. Um, maybe might not be the same Burnley that you'd normally see, obviously. I, I don't I don't mean that in terms of tactically. I mean, they're going to come and they're going to probably try and sit back and, and not want to do what Arsenal did the other night and allow us too much um, too much space and time in the final third uh, to pick passes out because we almost passed Arsenal uh, off the pitch. But I can, I can expect a physical side, a Burnley side that, um, you know, get in, get stuck in. Hopefully we get away from this game with no injuries and come out of it with no injuries. Um, but you're expecting, I'm expecting a bit of a tough test because it's a dice side and it's it's a Burnley side that, um, you know, when they switch on, don't really concede too many goals. However, tonight, I'm thinking we could score a couple, me. I've just seen the team news that's in front of me now and um, a lot of changes. Uh, Fernandinho back into centre-back, which is always interesting. Um, big Sinchenko fan, to be honest. And, I'm looking forward to watching him play at left back. Uh, I just I watch your podcast, listen to your podcast, sorry, um, about him behind closed doors and being played. And it, it's very strange. It's different. Um, personally, I enjoy listening to the sound effects of the players rather than the uh, crowd noise that's being played over the top. I just find it interesting to see who's trying to lead the team and you know showing a bit of leadership from the back. And I'm really enjoying it. But it's not the same, and I'm sure you're feeling the same way with um, not being at the game tonight yourself. So you're going for the, rather than the FIFA sound effects, you're going for the, the real sound of, in the stadium? Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm you, it's just interesting to watch. It's a, not kind of gives you an insight into how the players are communicating with each other on a, you know, a daily basis, the training, etc., and especially getting into a match situation. But, you know, it's... It's not the same, but it's very interesting as well, just to, to see how they interact with one another. <laughs> to get a positive result. City have been the most impressive team back, you know, only one game and on. It was Arsenal were playing, they weren't at it. What you can't do with City, whether you've been in lockdown or not, is stand off them. And, uh, and they made the fatal error that they tried to defend in numbers that they've done, I think, for the last two seasons. And it's ended the same way, fives and fours and threes. And today was five. It could have been more, of course. Um, but what surprised me a little bit was um, we had eight changes from the first game. So Pep is obviously utilising the squad to give more match fitness as well. Um, it played the way I looked at it because neither... well. Burnley weren't closing City down. City at least was trying to get the ball back quickly. Um, and it just looked to me as though City, it was like a pre-season game for City. They could play at whatever tempo they wanted. There was no real pressure on them because if anybody tried to put pressure on them from Burnley, they weren't going in numbers. And if you try and put pressure on yourself, you just get run ragged. And that's exactly what happened. And again, in the two games that we've played now, Burnley and uh, uh, Arsenal not one shot on target for either side and when you count up the amount of shots that City had and on target and goals uh, Pep couldn't have wished for it to start back any better the only downside to it is the uh, is the injury to Aguero that was taken off I don't know maybe you know I don't know how serious it is but we could when you think we've only got one striker really in in, in Gab's uh, we need a fit and raring Aguero because we've got some very important games, especially Champions League and uh, FA Cup that's coming up, you know, every three or four days now until until this finishes. It's obviously hard in there with no fans and stuff like that, but it's City, isn't it? I think they, I think they played well. I think they controlled the game. Um, they just they did exactly what was needed of them, and. It's, that's one thing which I really love about them. They're just business as usual. doesn't matter whether they're going to be fans there. doesn't matter who they're playing against. They always have the same way that they're going to play. And they went out there, did their job and just made it almost impossible for Burnley to get anything at all. You were obviously watching the game out in the States uh, on English TV. Phil Foden was the one that was picked out. Was he your man of the match? Yeah, I think so. I think um, 
I think over. I think the team did play really, really well. But he's the first goal is huge. You know, it sets the tone for the game. And then these contributions leading up to. Uh, I think it was David Silva's goal as well. Meant to, to get another goal. I, I think as an attacker, you're going to be judged on your goals, your assists, and key passes and stuff like that. And he's doing exactly the same as all the other players who were playing up there with him. So credit to him. Uh, Phil Foden definitely caught my eye because. Because he's so young and he's just he started he started few, he started very few games right now. But to see that confidence in him, especially in that no look pass for David Silva and his two goals so well taken, so that that confidence in him is is a really good sign that he might be a starter in the next few seasons. He might cement his place in the squad in the next few season and might be a big game player coming. He, he enjoyed that game, didn't you? I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. All I could say is Phil Foden. Wow. What a performance. He was, he's really shown that he is ready. He is really ready to be a member of the starting 11 now, especially now that, uh, that Spanish Dave is going to be, uh, uh, going on his way soon. Uh, it's, he's bought completely into Pep system and just, his brain, you know, the way he thinks it's just perfect for Pep. He, I'm so excited to see what the future holds for him. Um, and you know what? I, I was really happy with the performance of everyone overall. You know, Mares put in a great, uh, great show. You know, his energy, just his pace. You know, um, and, you know, even though, you know, David Silva is the greatest player I've ever seen in a city shirt, uh, bar none, my all-time favorite footballer. But, you know, in especially this year, you could definitely see his age. You know, it's, it's definitely caught up to him. But today, I, you know, you saw some signs of magic. You know, you know he's still Merlin. You know, um, that uh, his goal and the build-up to, to that goal, especially those, the last two goals. It was brilliant. You know, I said I was hoping for a 5-0 thrashing. Turns out we got one, so. <laughs> I think you've seen the next, you know, future England captain there. He's that good. I'm purring about him, eh? And I'm a red. <laughs> They're absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant to watch. Um, you know, you've got you've to appreciate good football. And, uh, you know, Phil Foden is a lad that I've, as I said, watched him a lot. Um, and I just think he, he sensational. He really is an outstanding prospect. I was lucky enough to uh, watch Paul Lennon a lot as a youngster. What a player he was, by the way. And um, I just think Foden is that good. He really is. Paul Lennon was a sensational player, and Phil Foden, he's got he's got all the attributes, hasn't he? And he really has. From my uh, office in uh, the southern suburbs of Sydney, Australia. Uh, we had the match kick off here at about five a.m. So uh, plenty of uh, coffee and football this morning. What do you think of the game then? I mean, clearly all the plaudits are going to uh, Phil Foden. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, deserving. I think he was absolutely fantastic today. Um, and if, um, you know, the second game back after, uh, you know, the best part of three months off, um, for him to be performing that way um, already just shows uh, just how much class and how much talent the young man has. And, um, you know, I think this is definitely a sign that uh, he should be playing more frequently now. And, uh, yeah, just looking forward to uh, what we get for us, uh, from him for the rest of the season and uh, for the future. I'd be really interested to hear what you've got to say as well, because I know that you are a very passionate Blue. I, I know a lot of people are, but you travel the length and breadth of the world to watch them in the flesh from time to time. You also watch games, of course, on TV. How are you coping now with the, the new reality? Um, I think uh, from a from a domestic standpoint, it's no different. Um, I like the fact that we're able to interact um, through this through this medium of contact through uh, Zoom as well. Um, so it just makes things a little bit uh, different. Um, we technically can actually go back to our local pubs and venues um, to watch matches. Um, back on the first of June, they allowed up to fifty people into pubs and venues. The only the only thing is this lockdown period has actually given our pub uh, cheers bar in, in downtown Sydney an opportunity to actually go renovate the place. So we can finally go back to the pub. The problem is we can't go back to our pub, but um, they're meant to be reopening again on the 1st of July. And uh, we're looking forward to getting people back there again. And um, 
you know, as I mentioned, this is this is a good substitute. We're still able to get people together and, and chat. Uh, I can understand if a few people want to hit the snooze button a few times more, uh, obviously, in our part of the world. But, um, yeah, it's it's just a different sort of normal. But uh, we're, we're, we're coping pretty well. Everybody will be talking about Foden, and quite rightly so. He was fantastic. Uh, it's so exciting to see such a young kid and a City fan there on the pitch. Um, but I, I mentioned before... Mara's first touch for that for that first goal that he got, uh, he just pulls them out of the air, and he did it. He did another one about ten minutes after that. Uh, and I love Mara's. I hate the people who knock him all the time. I think he's really getting into his stride with the club now. Well, another comfortable victory. Uh, game played. It felt like at a canter once again. The opposition didn't have a shot at goal. Um, so City march on to a game now against Chelsea on Thursday evening, followed by that FA Cup trip to Newcastle. So two big away games to come. I'll be, uh, of course, vlogging once again. If you want to get involved, then drop me a direct message on Twitter. In the meantime, remember, it's always great to be a blue. Big shout out to the three companies that have supported the products that I put out under the Forever Blue title throughout the year, the podcast and the vlogs. See you all soon.